Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. My name is Mackie Hall, and I love the Shape Builder tool. With a quick bit of understanding, even a brand new beginner can take a bunch of shapes and combine them into something way more interesting. Want proof? Here's what we're going to build. We're going to build a bunch of rectangles, use the Shape Builder tool to combine them, throw a head on, round the corners, and there you go. In addition to learning the Shape Builder tool, you're going to learn the following. You'll learn about using smart guides. You'll learn about the reflect tool. You'll deal with the advanced use of rectangles. You'll master beveling, moving shapes, and more. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's go. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. Our file will be 1,000 points wide by 1,000 points tall. It will have a single artboard. And since we're building it only for screen, Let's scroll down and make sure we've got the RGB color mode. We'll leave all the other settings the same. All right, before we get started, I want to mention that we are using the Essentials Classic layout. To switch to the Essentials Classic layout, all you need to do is go to Switch Workspace on the top right hand corner and select Essentials Classic. I encourage you to use Essentials Classic or similar simply because it shows all of the elements on screen, makes it easy to move around more intuitively. Next thing I want to mention is that we're using smart guides to switch to smart guides. All you need to do is go to view smart guides or select control U. One more thing worth mentioning is that we are going to be using the bottom center of the page to highlight key command recommendations, tips and tricks, and hotkey recommendations. On that note, we're building this piece on a PC. If you're building it on a Mac, be sure to swap the command key for the control key in the recommendations. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to select our rectangle tool and we're going to click anywhere on our artboard. We're going to create a new rectangle that is 50 points wide by 120 points tall. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to again use the rectangle tool, click anywhere on our artboard, this time around, we're going to make it 100 points wide by 25 points tall. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and grab our direct selection tool. And let's grab our top left anchor point and let's click and drag down so that it matches or intersects with the top left hand corner of our original rectangle, just like that. Once we've got that, let's hold our shift key, arrow to the left twice, with every click that moves our element 10 points so that we've moved it over 20 points. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to release our shift key and arrow to the left five more times. That moves our shape over five more points for a total of 25 points. Once we're done with that, let's go ahead and grab a rectangle tool again. Let's click anywhere on the artboard and this time around, we're going to create a rectangle that's 20 points wide by 150 points tall, just like that. Once done, again, we'll grab our direct selection tool, we'll grab our top left hand anchor point, and we'll drag it over to the top left hand anchor point of our second rectangle, just like that. We'll deselect. We're getting there, and as we go forward, you'll notice that we're getting closer to creating the left side of our generic person. Let's grab our rectangle tool one more time. Let's click anywhere on the artboard. This time around, we're going to make our rectangle 30 points wide by 120 points tall. As we've done with the previous rectangles, let's grab our direct selection tool, let's grab our top left anchor point, and let's drag it over so that it intersects with the bottom left hand corner of our original rectangle. What we've created becomes pretty clear if we drag across all of our rectangles, and let's go ahead and make our fill transparent just like that. Let's deselect, and now you can see all of our overlapping and intersecting rectangles. Once we've done that, you can clearly see the left side of our generic male. Now that we're here, let's go ahead and unify these shapes. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use our Shape Builder tool. Check it out. All we're going to do is let's grab our selection tool. Let's drag across all of our shapes just like that. Let's go ahead and grab our Shape Builder tool and let's drag across all of the elements that we are going to use. Notice as we drag over all of our elements, what happens? It's going to take all of those individual geometric shapes and build them or combine them into a singular shape. Check it out. 
way we do that, all we need to do is click and drag across our shapes. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead, grab our selection tool and deselect our shape. And notice what we've done. We've created a single shape out of all the geometric shapes that we've clicked and dragged over. And notice the one we have not clicked over, a shape has also been created from that. What we need to do is delete that shape. Check out how easy it is. All we need to do is keep our selection tool, click on it. Let's go ahead and delete it. And there you go. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and create the other half of our shape. This is pretty easy. All we're going to do is we're going to select the shape and we're going to use the reflect tool to create a reflected shape from that. Check it out. All right, really quick mention here. If you don't see your reflect tool, here's the way to get to it. All you need to do is click and hold your rotate tool on your left toolbar, drag down your reflect tool, or of course, you can select O as your hotkey. Let's get back to it. Let's go ahead and select our shape. We've done that. Let's double click on our reflect tool. And let's make sure that we've got our reflect selected to our vertical axis. Once we've got that, let's make sure that our preview is selected and then take a look at the preview and you can see that we've created a reflection from that. Let's click copy. And right away you can see our copied shape. Here's what we're going to do next. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's hold our shift key and let's arrow over until the legs are clear from one another. I've arrowed over five times. Let's go ahead and deselect both of our shapes. And that looks pretty reasonable right there. Let's go ahead and combine those shapes. Again, we've dragged across both of our shapes. Let's go ahead and grab our Shape Builder tool. And once again, we're going to click and drag over both shapes. There you go. Notice that they're a singular shape. This can become more clear when we grab our Selection tool and click off of our shapes. Before we do anything, take a look at our arms. Our arms are entirely too long. We usually want them to end around the inseam of our person, so let's go ahead and fix that. The way we're going to do that is let's go grab our pen tool and let's drag a horizontal line. As we hover down our piece with our smart guides on, notice that it activates once we match the inseam of our shape. We're going to click and release. Let's go ahead and hold our shift key. That ensures that our drag is perfectly horizontal and click and release on the other side of our shape, just like that. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Now that we've got that, we're going to use our shape builder tool to do something else. This time around, we are going to use it to exclude shapes from our original shapes. Take a look. Let's go ahead and drag across our entire shape just like this. Let's go ahead and grab our Shape Builder tool, and this time around, we're going to click on the shapes that we want to exclude. We'll first hover over our left arm. Let's click on that. Let's hover over our right arm and click on that too. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and grab our Selection tool. Let's deselect our shape, and let's go ahead and get to the business of deleting all the extra lines. We'll start with our right arm. Delete that. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with our left arm. That looks good right there. And let's go ahead and get rid of the remaining line segments as well. We'll start with the left and work our way across. We'll click, delete, click, delete, and one more time. There you go, we're getting close now. Let's go ahead and add the head. The way we're going to do that, let's click and hold our rectangle tool. Let's grab our ellipse tool. Let's go ahead and click and release anywhere on the artboard and let's create an ellipse that's 50 points by 50 points. Looks pretty good right there. Let's grab our direct selection tool and let's go ahead and drag it over the center top of our shape, just like that. It looks pretty good. Let's hold our shift key and arrow it up three times. That will move our ellipse or our head up 30 points. Let's go ahead and deselect. We're getting close now, but let's go ahead and finish it out by rounding out some of the corners to really give our piece some detail. First thing we're going to do is let's start from the bottom. Let's click and drag across our shape's legs. And let's grab our bevel points and drag them all the way up, just like that. That looks pretty good right there. Once we've got that, let's do the same thing over here with our midsection. First of all, let's go ahead and zoom into our shape. And then let's go ahead and go to outlines. 
That'll help us because it will allow us to drag across the shape from inside the shape without moving the actual shape. Take a look. Again, we'll drag across the inseam. Let's click on the bevel points and let's pull it all the way in just like that. And let's do the same thing with our armpits right here. Let's click and drag across our armpits and let's pull them all the way in just like that. Let's do the same thing with the bottom of our arms or our hands. This time around, we're going to do something different. We'll drag across our left arm, just like that. We're going to select the anchor points at the bottom of our left arms. And then let's go ahead, hold our shift key, and let's drag across our right arms. This allows us to select multiple anchor points. Once we've got that, let's click and drag our bevel points all the way up. Let's deselect. That looks really good. Let's do it one more time on the shoulders. We'll start with the left shoulder. Let's go ahead and drag across to the right shoulder. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag our bevel point all the way until it hits the armpit, just like that. Let's go ahead and deselect. It's looking good. Let's go ahead and exit outlines. And then let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's drag across both shapes just like that. And let's go ahead and group them together. All we need to do that is click on object, group, or select control G. Now that we've got that, let's bring our entire page into view. Let's select our piece one more time. Let's go ahead and trade our fill and strokes so that our stroke is transparent and our fill is black. From there, we can always change the color to our shape any way we want. Now, because our shape is grouped together, we can always align it to the center of the page horizontally and vertically. Let's go ahead and deselect, and we have completed our generic male shape. Well done. Now it's your turn. Take what you've learned from building your guy and build his female counterpart. By the way, you don't need to be super precise like we were in this video. Instead, just click and drag, then use the Shape Builder tool to combine your shapes. With that being said, if you have any questions, comments, or critiques, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace. <music>